Introduce yourself. Who are you? What's your major and your role at Trell? My name is Roman. I am a first year graduate student uh, in the Aerospace College, and I am the principal engineer of the fluid system in Trell. And um, my responsibilities are mostly oversight of all the different projects on our different subsystems. Having a pretty decent understanding of all those different subsystems and different projects that are going on within our group. And then also sort of leading the correspondence between our group and other groups and the discussions on how our systems are coupled and how they interact. Great, yeah. Can you tell us about how you kind of got into your position in Trell, how you built up from your way on a sub team? Yeah. So I initially applied for Troll in August of last year. I interviewed with actually Eric and Abraham of Propulsion and basically started out on that team, but uh, more or less on the sub team that was dealing with fluids, which then eventually actually became its own team, the fluids team. I worked directly with uh, Jackie Go, who was the PE at the time. Um, and yeah, really just like any sort of talk we had even like leadership talks, I would like ask to kind of join in just to hear the discussion to really be in the loop on different things. And not necessarily because I wanted to become PE, but really just because there were a lot of things that were kind of ambiguous to me. Really just things that when you first join Trail, you kind of have to just be caught up to speed with. And it really just helps to sit in, listen to the talks, listen to what's like kind of the focus right now, what exactly we're trying to tackle. I just kept on doing that more and more. And um, eventually Jack asked me like if I just wanted to become PE for the summer. And I said, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So that's how I've become PE for the food system. Sweet. So why are you interested in space or rocketry? Uh, so, yeah, I guess right from the get-go, I wasn't really specifically interested in rocketry. In fact, I was pretty much my entire life more interested in uh, aviation and aeronautics. Um, it wasn't really until I, I guess, joined Trell that my interest really started to spike in rocketry. In space, I was already generally interested, but really in rocketry, like just seeing the collaboration in the lab and then just learning more and more about how the design actually is, is made for a rocket, like the whole process, that, that really sparked the interest there for me. Over time, I just got more and more interested. And now I'm at the point where I just like, study different stuff about different rockets. There's a lot of YouTube channels with a lot of great videos that talk about different rocket designs, different like space organizations and governments that are designing different types of rockets. Like I just absorb it all just because it's super interesting to me. Yeah. I mean, that's really the beauty of Trail also is like once you've kind of gotten the basics down for our rocket, which is a simple pressure fed system, then really everything else, like when you hear people talking about, uh, I don't know, the rocket systems uh, on a Falcon 9, then you can kind of understand exactly what they're talking about because you already have the base knowledge. It makes it a lot easier to understand, actually. Yeah. Yeah. It's good to know. So if I ever want to go into rocket science, just start looking up rocket videos on YouTube and then figure it yeah. out with Trail. <laughs> Oh, no joke. There's some really, there's a really good channel like uh, Scott Manley, I think is a pretty popular one. Um, yeah, there's just like a bunch of them. And I don't even know how I came across them. I think YouTube just figured out I'm interested in rocketry and just started shooting me suggestions. And so, yeah, YouTube yeah. is good like that. Kind of crazy, yeah. but kind of cool. A little too good. <laughs> Here's the question that may require you to take some time to answer, but what is your most interesting story from Trell? Okay. Yeah. So, um, Really, all the teams, they, they do this, but like uh, as a lab, as a whole, we try to kind of reach out to different industries and talk to industry professionals to kind of give us some insights on what we're doing and what we can improve on. And the foods team is no different. We uh, actually have been in direct contact with two former SpaceX employees, one of which was really helping us sort out our entire procedure for filling our rocket with propellants and how we're going to design the entire fill system, the umbilical that attaches to the rocket, and then how we're going to disconnect all the logistics regard to that and he's been a huge help and there was one afternoon we were all just sitting down and just kind of chatting through a bunch of technical things it had been like already two or three hours of just rambling about different things that we we're trying to figure out and he just kind of happened to go on a tangent which i found to be super uh, interesting because it wasn't related to rocketry or anything it was actually just sort of a discussion of um, his choice to quit spacex and to kind of go on a year sabbatical as many people know it's no secret I mean, the work at SpaceX can be very grueling and a lot of grind work, um, a lot of hours. And he actually told us that it's not too uncommon for people to take a break like that, like take a year sabbatical and that you shouldn't feel like you need to constantly be doing something as if one year of you taking time for yourself is looked down upon. In fact, 
he said it was a really good decision that he made because he actually got to you know travel a bit got to work on some other projects that he did and kind of reflect during that time and see exactly where he wanted to continue with certain things and um yeah it was awesome he gave us all these suggestions about where to travel like southeast asia because it's really cheap a lot of different places you can see there it was unexpected but it was it was really cool it was good life advice and uh yeah yeah so for your future career goals, I know you're in graduate school. What are you planning on doing after graduate school? So after graduate school, mostly I'm not exactly sure I want to do a PhD just yet. Currently, I'm pursuing a master's and I have about one year left until I'm finished with that. I think I'll probably be aiming to go into industry as soon as I finish my master's, possibly working for a company that deals with uh, launch systems, um, maybe even local in Austin like Firefly. I've heard some good things about them and obviously we work with them to get kind of a close-up idea of, of what they're about or potentially something more aligned to the research that i've been doing for the university which is like electric propulsion for nanosats and different satellites i think i kind of just want to see what those industries are like because i've never actually worked for work directly with rockets or work directly in sort of propulsion all my past internships were kind of in a, in a different area but uh yeah and see how that goes and then maybe sometime afterwards pursue my phd i don't feel like i'm in any rush to do anything uh, or get anything done in time. So yeah, I'm just just kind of playing it by ear. Nice. So you mentioned you had other internships of those that you can remember. Which one was your favorite and why? Oh, by far, uh, it was working at a Johnson Space Center and the Flight Operations Division with robotics. It was a really awesome experience. To, to kind of describe what that's about, Flight Operations is like everything regarding the International Space Station. Basically maintaining everything that's in orbit, everything associated with that. So like when you think of flight operations, you can think flight controllers and mission control mostly. And basically everyone that supports that effort. And the robotics division mostly deals with the robotic arm on the space station. I don't know if you're familiar with the yeah. robotic arm. Yeah, so the, the Canada Arm 2 and the SPDM, which is like, you can kind of think of it as like a miniature robot, which has like these two arms and can basically move different like payloads around. Um, but yeah, I, I got to intern there for pretty much all of 2018. It was an incredible experience and ended up not being exactly what I wanted to do because it was more like operations and designing procedures and, and not really what you would think in the classical sense is engineering. But from an experience, absolutely incredible because their job is literally to design procedures and procedures are basically commands to send to the uh, robots to then execute different things like move payloads around capture spacecraft all sorts of different things and then actually execute them in real time so then sitting in mission control and carrying out all these procedures one of the coolest things i thought i got to do was actually design a procedure and then sit in and watch that procedure be executed in mission control and they actually let me send the very first command of my procedure and then maybe like I don't know, about four or five seconds later, you could see on the camera, the robot just kind of slowly started to move. It moves very, very slowly, but still, it was just like, it was incredible seeing that happen. It was a really good experience. That sounds incredible. Yeah, that would be really cool. Kind of makes me think of Wally when you were describing the, <laughs> I don't yeah, know why. Yeah. It's got like enough human features to it that's kind of similar, like like Wally, you could say. Yeah. It's got like a, a body, it's got like, a, not really a head, but just like something that kind of looks like a head. Kind of a sort of humanoid. Exactly. So how has Trell impacted your college experience? I would say overall it's been a huge positive uh, impact on my college experience. Uh, well, a grad school experience. I feel like it's a lot more direct and a lot more applied than most things you're going to get to do in grad school. Um, but that, that's also... I think that's a generalization. Like what I'm mostly doing for my research is computational. So obviously that's not, it's not as hands on. It seems like less direct as like designing a rocket and then literally launching it at some point. Mm -hmm. um, but overall, I think the entire experience as a lab as a whole, being able to collaborate with people who are ambitious, very talented and very smart and seeing things slowly come to life after a lot of hard work, it's, it's pretty awesome. And then, then also, again, just like everyone in the lab, I mean, there's a lot of different things that the lab does in terms of social activities, at least before the whole COVID situation. That's, that was pretty awesome, too. Like our field day that we had, that was pretty fun. Um, yeah. Our team, the foods team, actually, we hosted probably three or four different like social just for our team, again, before everything got shut down. I mean, overall, just like a really positive feel. I've had a good impression from everyone I've worked with. Really been awesome so far. Yeah, COVID definitely has moved us online for sure. I remember field day though. Bryce Blackwell was talking so much about the business team beating everybody in kickball and then there was only like six or eight of us. 
yeah. <laughs> compared to the yeah. 13 or 15 of y'all. Yeah, I mean, y'all totally good, right? Y'all beat TLO, I'm pretty sure. I don't or know. I'm not sure who we beat. I, I don't even know that. if we beat one person, <laughs> but it's <laughs> all right. So speaking of COVID, how has quarantine affected you and your work? And, you know, what are some activities you've been doing to kind of alleviate any stress? So like, like I said yesterday, or well, not yesterday. Was it? Yeah, yesterday. Yeah. I can't even keep track of days anymore. Um, I mean, it hasn't really changed much. It's uh, looks just like this, like just me in my room and working on my computer. Yeah. And overall, uh, I'm sure it's been tough on like a few different people working so much from home and, and not going anywhere and interacting with anyone. But like as far as the trail work goes, I think it's actually increased the number of times I've talked to people throughout the day just because we have so many different Zoom discussions. And I feel like I've actually been able to accomplish more that way because it's sort of like I see it as a hindrance and I try to tackle that just by being very proactive about the things I work on. But as far as just like my daily life, yeah, it can be tough at some times just like not being able to go and sit down and just talk to someone in person in the lab or just like in general i've uh, done like a few different things like started a few different hobbies like growing some plants like i have a garden with some tomatoes uh, banana peppers and uh, onions which sadly didn't grow but it's it's like something cool to go out you know every once in a while and kind of take a break make sure my tomatoes are still there and not eaten by some animal and just like having some sort of daily routine uh and then there's doing something different every other day kind of gives like a differentiation between the days and make sure they don't just all mix in together as they did today obviously i can't even tell that we talked just yesterday so <laughs> yeah. great 